In this video, I want to do a big review about this awesome book called The Company of One by Paul Jarvis. Why staying small is the next big thing for business. Come right up. Now, Paul Jarvis is one of my favorite online creator person, business person out there. He is traditionally a web designer, but he's also you know, been creating courses about email marketing. He has a few softwares. He is a podcast host. He's an author. And he's also one of the best newsletter creators out there, his Sunday Dispatches. And uh, every time he sends it, I open it, guaranteed. And uh, it's just awesome. So I was so excited to hear when he put this, together this book. And the first time I heard it is when he was co-hosting a podcast called The Invisible Office Hour. And he co-hosted it with Jason Zook. And he was talking about putting together a book about a company of one. And I was excited because that kind of really spoke to me and the idea sounded really, really good because not only I'm currently a company of one, but that's the way I see my business going at this moment in time. So I was very excited. So finally, got my hand in this copy and uh, let me tell you all about it. The whole essence about company of one is to question growth. And it talks a lot of times about you know, growing is not always the best decision. It's the easiest decision because if you have a problem in your business, it's easy to throw stuff at it, throw more, as you call it, more at it. And that's not always the best solution. So for example, maybe you have a goal to get lots of customers, then you hire more employees. Or maybe you want to increase your revenue, then you spend more money. It's more, more, more. But that's not always the best solution. It's the easiest but it's not the smartest solution at all. Because the problem with having more, it means that you will create more other things, more stress, more responsibilities, more expenses, more complexities. It creates also all these things as well. And that's not always something that you'd want in your life. There's a story about how you should look at your lifestyle. What do you want your lifestyle to be? Do you want to have a responsibility of lots of employees and focus all your energy and time on growing and business into a multi-million pound is constantly growing? Or do you want to create a business that is more suitable for your lifestyle and that you don't want that complexity, you don't want that stress and extra responsibilities? And Paul talks about that in this book, the fact that you know growth is seen as a natural thing and you should embrace it and you should aim for that that's not always the case you should think about other ways of growing but not necessarily into a huge complex organization because if you're a company of one you can still have a successful business and that's the one thing he said about company of one is that at any size simple rules simple processes and simple solutions typically win an example would be if you are needing some help with your work. Is it better to hire an employee or is it better to, better to get a freelancer? Now, of course, with an employee, you have more responsibility because you're kind of looking after them, their livelihood, they're making sure they look after well in terms of their performance and health. You know, a lot of responsibility if you have your own employees. But maybe is it better to have your own freelancer that you can go to and depend on and that way you can get, get that freelancer to help you when you need it and you don't have that extra responsibility you don't have that all paperwork and holiday organization and organizing salary and stuff like that that's kind of keeping things simple so that's just one of the examples but the whole point of company one is that you don't incur all the problems that can occur when you grow your business into a huge scale so you will kind of limit that. And as I said, simple process, simple rules, simple solutions, and you can still grow your business to how you like it. And I should also point out that Paul is not saying that you should be a single person business to be a company of one. It's about being better, about being more efficient. It's not just about focusing on being profitable only and scaling that. It's just about being better for your existing customers. And the other thing as well is he coined the term, the term uh, entrepreneur. And he's talking about those who are in employment, who can also be a company of one. If you have your own goals and your own kind of objective that you want to reach, you know, you can kind of create that 
framework and use the mindset of a company of one to get what you want in your employment. Two big examples would be Facebook and Google. Now Facebook, apparently their like system came about from the hackathon, which is where people come together and get ideas and just to make things better, make software better, and just, you know, come together and just, you know, implement it. And apparently the Facebook like came from that, and that's from people coming together and thinking of an idea and how to make it work. It's simple as that. And even Google, Google is famous for their 20% time. And that is 20% of their time, the employee's time, can be spent on something other than the traditional work that they have to do. It can be spent on other projects within Google that they can also create. So this has resulted into so many things. Gmail and I think Chrome as well, you know, and more than half of Google's products came because of this 20% time. And that way that allowed the, you know, each employee to be technically a company of one. And I've mentioned earlier about how you should, you know, look at your existing customers and your existing audience. And a lot of businesses are guilty of that. They're always focusing on wanting more. And again, I've mentioned more. And here's the problem that people do is that they focus on getting more customers, more revenue, more this and that. But instead, what you should really focus on is to improve the current products and services and improve the relationship with our customers. Just improve what you have already. And that will naturally help you to grow, but in a more manageable way. And by doing that, by focusing on your existing customers, that will help you to kind of you know, make your business profitable and successful. And people don't do that. Companies don't do that. And I think the biggest example is the insurance companies out there. You know, I'm talking like some of those car insurance companies or home insurance, any of these kind of insurance companies. They always reward new customers with the best deals and the best products. But when it comes to the existing customers, you know how it is. You get this letter comes in and says, we're going to increase your rates by X amount. And that happened to me just recently that it kind of made me really frustrated because I am paying enough money and they increase it, yet for the new customers, they have decreased the price, which is really doesn't make sense at all. You should value your existing customers. And that's what they're guilty of. And that's in my own personal reason why I am never loyal to insurance providers because they don't look after their existing customers and I'm sure you can relate to that as well. Now I can go on all about it, I mean it's such a good book, I absolutely loved it, it really spoke to me, it's just something that I've been thinking about a lot for my own business, I don't know what I want to do in the long term but the more I thought about it before this book came out, the more I wanted to keep things simple yet profitable so that it suits my lifestyle and it suits what I'm aiming for. It might change and maybe I will get employees and other things. Who knows? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not about not doing it. It's about making sure that you make the smart decisions and being a company one can do that. But I absolutely love this book and I think you should get it as well and apply it to so many people. Apply it to those who are a one person business, apply to those who have a few employees or a few freelancers, even those in jobs and employment, it's still a good book. You can still get a lot out of this as well. And I should also point out that Paul Jarvis also has his own Company of One podcast. And you can hear him speaking about certain snippets of this book. And he also interviews other people who are featured in this book about their way of managing their Company of One. So check that out as well, it's a really, really good book. And yeah, just get it. I'll put the link in the description down below where you can, you know, view the transcript or you can just purchase your own copy. And uh, I'm really, really impressed with it. So, Paul, thank you for that. I should also point out though that depending on where you live, you might get a different cover. So, because I bought this in the UK, this is the cover it will look like. But if you bought it elsewhere, you might get a different cover that looks like up here as well. So. Different covers, but exactly the same. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, the content being different, but just the same thing. I hope you enjoyed this book review and I would love to know what do you think about the concept of a company of one. I'd really, really love to know your thoughts about it. Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, while you're at it, I would absolutely love it if you can make sure you subscribe to the channel so that I can keep delivering the good stuff and you don't miss out at all. Let me know what you think as well down below and I will speak to you next time.
Take care.